All right, so with encryption, we solved the problem of confidentiality with message authentication codes. We solved the problem of uh, authenticity. Now, question is, so we can use them independently. You know, you can use AES for encryption and obtain confidentiality. And you can also use AES and CMAG mode and provide message authentication. So instead of doing this two or using two different algorithms, can we have it as a single algorithm? So authenticated encryption means that. So here, let me uh, read the slides. Message authentication code is computed as a result of a complete pass over the data. If we provide both encryption and authentication, then we may require two passes over the data, right? Because one for encryption, one for message authentication. So we can combine these two operations to provide authenticated encryption. So in this scenario, we have the encryption algorithm like this, but instead of the key and the plain text as input, as in the case of block ciphers, now we have more input. And as the output, we don't only produce cipher text, but we also produce tag, okay? So we have key as input, nonce, plain text, and associated data. Only the key is secret here. And we provide output as ciphertext and tag. So I will talk about associated data in this slide. So we may need some information like headers, for instance, to be authenticated, but not encrypted, okay? Thus the authenticated information can be processed before the decryption of the entire message. Such schemes are called authenticated encryption with associated data. So associated data is sent as plain text, but it is also authenticated. That is the idea. So AEAD means authenticated encryption with associated data. So we may prefer these two operations to be performed in parallel. We may prefer these operations to be online. Namely, we can start performing the encryption and authentication operations as soon as some part of the message is available without the knowledge of the entire message or it is linked, okay? So let's start with the, uh, one of the most known examples, CCM mode. This is counter with cipher blockchaining message authentication code, two pass block cipher mode. It is an IEEE standard for wireless LANs. Appears in this special publication, SP800-38C. And tag is concatenated to the end of the cipher text. So the picture is something like this. So you have the message. You use your encryption algorithm in CBC mode to provide tag, as we have seen in CBC Mac. But you also use the same uh, plain text in the counter mode of encryption, okay? And provide cipher text here. So you have two paths over the data, as you can see. You use the same encryption algorithm, for instance, AES-128 in CC mode. This means that you provide encryption in counter mode and provide tag in CBC mode, MAC mode. More known version is GCM mode. This is Galois counter mode. So you again perform counter mode of operation encryption, as you can see here. Here, the multiplication operation is just Galois multiplication. This is why we call it a Galois counter mode. So if you have associated data, you also put it here. So you perform this encryption and provide ciphertext blocks here, but you also perform more operation here. You, here you exhort with length of the associated data and length of the ciphertext. You perform, as you can see, some Galois operations. You exhort it here and provide the tag. So you have the ciphertext and tag, but as you can see, we have only one pass over the data. So this is better than CCM mode. So currently we are uh, in a Zoom session. So if you look at the uh, statistics, you will see that we are using AES 256 in GCM mode. So this is what currently Zoom is performing, okay, this. So this is an online uh, property. So we don't know the whole size of the plain text because as I speak and as I move, my video and voice are generated. So you don't know what will be the end of this video, right? You cannot see the feature. So this is why it works. So you can do actually something else. So the previous examples I showed you were using 
a single block cipher for both authentication and encryption, right? You can use a hash function and the block cipher to obtain the same thing. So there are three famous examples, make and encrypt, make then encrypt and encrypt and make, okay? So let's first look at make and encrypt. So you have the plain text here. You have a secret key, use it and obtain the encryption to provide cipher text. You have the same plain text here, put it in a hash function, but maybe use it in a HMAC mode using the secret key because normally hash function doesn't use a secret key, but if you run it in HMAC mode, it provides the tag. So you simply concatenate it. So you have the cipher text and the Mac, the tag. Yeah. So this is adopted by SSH protocol. In earlier versions, this is the default. So as you can see, we have the same plain text and we have two passes over the data, okay? The algorithms are actually clear from the names. So if the name is Mac, then encrypt. So what you do is as follows, you have the plain text, you create the tag from the hash function, again, maybe using an HMAC mode, you concatenate it to the plain text, and then perform the encryption. So you have a total ciphertext here, and this is used in TLS 1.2 and prior, but we don't use it in 1.3, okay? So let's move on to the final one, encrypt then map. So as the name suggests, you perform the encryption, obtain the ciphertext, but take the ciphertext and put it into your HMAC algorithm and obtain the tag. So actually this one is better than the other one. So actually the previous ones are not broken. So they're secure too, but this has some more properties because uh, this is more secure against both privacy and integrity attacks. This means as follows, if you go back, for instance, in this case, you are using the same plain text for encryption and same plain text for uh, producing the text. So if you use the same input for two different algorithms in the past, we have seen that user can have more information. So we don't have a way to break this model, but in the past we have seen that using the same uh, plain text for two different algorithms sometimes leaks information. So this is why we say that this may be more secure against privacy and integrity attacks. But more importantly, in this third scenario, MEC can be verified before decrypting the whole cipher text because you have the cipher text and you receive the tag and you want to check if this is authentic, you simply take the cipher text, calculate the tag here and check if it matches this one. And you use the secret key here. So nobody can force the uh, tag from the cipher text. So if the tags are not, are different, then you simply drop this packet because you don't need to decrypt it back. But if you go back here, in order to ch check the tag here, for instance, you receive this, you first perform the encryption, then take the plain text, calculate the tag and check if it matches this one. So even if the uh, tag is not correct, you have to perform the decryption here. So this is why this one is more preferred. So we thought that maybe at TLS 1.3, this might be the new standard, but uh, in the early stages, they said that they are going to choose an authenticated, uh, sorry, authenticated encryption with associated data. So they give the impression that they are not going to use this one. So as we have guessed, uh, in TLS 1.3, we have Chacha Tivanti Poly 1305, okay? So uh, together with AES-GCM mode. So in TLS 1.3, you can use either AES-GCM or Chacha Tivanti with this poly. Okay, choice is yours. So you might ask that, why would I use Chacha if I already have AES? So let me give you why you should prefer AES in PCs and maybe in mobile phones Chacha. So Intel processors in Westmere in 2010 come with AES hardware instructions, AES NI, which make AES encryptions effectively free. So we already talked about this at the hardware level. Almost every CPU since 2010, Intel or AMD CPUs have this property. So if you have this fast encryption, then there is no need to use Chacha, right? However, phones and tablets don't support AES NI. Currently, there are some ARM processors. They're going to have this kind of uh, support, but 
uh, most of the time you don't have this instruction set in your phones or tablets. Since RC4 is broken, Google replaced RC4 with Chacha 20 in Chrome around 2013, way before TLS 1.3. And TLS 1.3 uses Checha with this poly for authenticates encryption with associated data. So it is a battery friendly alternative to AES GCN. So if you're at the PC world, it might be better to use the ASNI instruction set. But if you're at the tablet or phone, it might be better to use Checha to have, you know, say battery. Okay. So uh, Checha is a different version of Salsa. These algorithms were designed by Bernstein in 2005. It was submitted to EasyStream. So this is a stream cipher. In 2008, a modified version is named Chacha. Google selected Chacha and this poly algorithm to replace RC4 in TLS. OpenSSH also adopted these two algorithms. They are also used in random number generators for operating systems like FreeBSD, OpenBSD, and so on. Linux kernel uses Checha Tivan to generate data for non blocking this URandom device. So it is used in you know, random number generators. IETF published a reference implementation for modified Checha Tivan in this RFC. And use of Checha Tivan in IKE, sorry, IKE and IPsec have been proposed for standardization in this RFC. And finally, it is, it's used in TLSA being proposed for standardization in this RFC. And also Chacha Tivanti is used in many VPN protocols. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, we always talk about advanced encryption standard AES, but Chacha became very popular in many different areas. So if you need something other than AES, this is a good alternative. So let me briefly explain how uh, Chacha works actually. So it has a, a initial state like this. So you fill it with constants, key, position and nonce. In some implementations, nonce is 64 bit like this. And in some cases you use all of them as nonce as 128 bits, depends on the uh, standard. So this initial state is represented as 16 32 bit words. At odd runs, the columns are used, and at even runs, the rows are processed via the quarter run function. So let me show you this quarter run function. So assume that we are at the first run, so it is odd. So we process columns. So we take this column, okay? So we write it here. And at a single run, we perform these operations for this column. But since we have four columns, we have to do it in parallel. So think about this picture and put it four times next to each other. You process all of these uh, sorry, columns. I think I, it's first I said column, but show row. So these are our columns. So you take the first column, write it here, perform this operation. Since it's, it is called Chacha Tivanti, this operation actually repeated 20 times, okay? So this is for encryption. So you uh, have the initial state, you modify the initial state like with these properties, then provide the cipher text. So this is a stream cipher, but for the uh, uh, production of tag, you have the message and key, and you put it in this poly algorithm. Okay. So here is the pseudocode, but it performs very basic operations. Okay. And so you might think that uh, why it is called this. Actually, as you can see, one is shifted 130 bits to the left. This actually represents two to the 130. And you subtract one. So this is actually a polynomial two to the 130 minus one. Okay, so this is hence the name, okay. So you simply perform some operations using key and the message and obtain the tag at the end. That is the whole idea. Here is the pseudocode. So at the uh, at this part, at the TLS part and so on, we have these standards. But at the NIST sites, uh, we are going to have an authenticated encryption standard, which would be lightweight at the end of this competition. So we already talked about this. 
currently uh, we are at the last phase of the competition. We have 10 finalists and we don't know if we are going to have one winner or more. As I mentioned before, uh, the industry and NISP would probably prefer one standard because it is easier to implement on a device. If you have more than one standard, industry might need to implement all of them on the same device, which will be against the idea of lightweight. And for the documentation of for standardization, it would be nice if you have only one standard. But of course, academicians might prefer more winners so that in different use cases, you would have a different algorithm. So we will see probably next year the winner and we will see how it works in real life. 